Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to Central at Home. And we're so glad that you could join us wherever you're watching from in the world. We are honored to have you part of things today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're joining us on Church Online, we wanna encourage you to let us know where you're watching from. Let us know how you're doing. If you have a question or if you have a prayer request, go ahead, even right now, put it in the chat window. And we have some amazing pastors and hosts over there that would love to serve you in any way that we can. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, would you do us a giant favor and do like my son says and smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. These are easy ways for us to spread the word about what God is doing here at Central. And we believe he's doing something really powerful right now. So if you could do that, that would mean the world to us. So today we wanna do something we haven't done before, and that is we wanna see you. And one of the ways that we thought would be fun is if you take a selfie or take a picture of the group of people you're with, we'd love for you to send that to us. And we wanna feature you over the next few weeks. So if you text the word WATCH to 905-937-5610, uh, it'll kick you back a link and you can upload that picture. And over the next few weeks, we wanna celebrate our online community, which is now all of us. And uh, we wanna feature you because we love you and we really care about you and we, and we wanna celebrate you. So please do that. We'd love to celebrate you over the next few weeks. So today we wanna invite you to take a few moments after you've taken your selfie, after you've sent it in, just to quiet your heart. And we think there's something powerful about just focused time with God, with one another. And we're often, like me, so distracted and so many things that are buzzing and clicking and vying for our attention. But we wanna encourage you over the next hour, would you just join us and would you let faith build up in you? Would you worship however you feel comfortable? Would you maybe journal if you feel like you wanna write something that God might be speaking to you? Maybe you need to close your eyes. Maybe you need to sing. Maybe you need to worship. Maybe you need to dance. I don't know, whatever you need to do, I wanna encourage you to let God just meet you wherever you are. Maybe you're by yourself or you're with a group of people or you're with your family, but allow God to meet you in the deepest place and, and allow him to speak to you and encourage you. I wanna encourage you to do that. And then at the end of our experience today, there are some discussion questions. We wanna encourage you to take a moment, discuss those with the people that you're with, or if you're by yourself, again, you can engage with our people on the chat windows uh, if you're watching on our live experiences or you can text a friend. But we wanna encourage you to think about these things, reflect on them, Ask God maybe what he wants to speak to the deepest part of your heart. And so with that being said, we're gonna to worship together. I wanna to invite you in this next moment to begin to worship as we do this together as a church family.
changes always the same God you are here moving in our midst we worship you we worship you you are here working in this place we worship you yes we worship you you are here you are here yes touching every heart i worship you yes i worship you I worship you, yes, we worship you. Come on, sing this out. You are way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes, you are way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, yes, turning lives around. I worship you, yes, we worship you. You are here, mending every eye. I worship you.
Even when I don't see it, you work. Even when I don't feel it, you work. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work. Even when I don't feel it, you work. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Today, I'm so grateful that there's a God who is a way maker. And I hope you're encouraged by that today because the truth is wherever you find yourself, um, if you're trying to figure out the way uh, to live your life, the way to lead your family, the way to, to be when you find yourself alone and, and uh, struggling with your thoughts, wherever you find yourself, today we're reminded that God is the way, that He's the way, He's the truth, that He's the life, that if you're lacking anything, that today you can be reminded of that. And so. From my living room to yours today, we're gonna we're gonna take the next few moments, and I love that we can do this. That this moment can transcend screens and cameras, and and that we can meet together and remind ourselves and build faith on this foundation that God is the way, He's the truth, He's the life. And so, I was reading this past week in the book of Philippians, and and uh, I was just so encouraged by this. I want to share it with you, Philippians chapter four, verse six, and this is really a scripture about peace. And if you need peace today. Uh, this will be for you, but I invite you to read it with me. Here's what it says in Philippians 4, verses 6 to 7. It says, Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, if you need this today, this is for you. The peace of God, which transcends all technology, it transcends all pandemics, it transcends all situations, it transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and it'll guard your minds in Christ Jesus. So we're gonna to pray together over the next few moments. I invite you to, to, maybe you need to bow your head or maybe you need to close your eyes. We're gonna pray for some specific things. In fact, this week uh, we had some people on Facebook and Instagram write in a number of things that they need prayer for. We're gonna pray for them even right now. And if you resonate with some of these things, uh, I invite you to just to begin to pray for your situation as well. But on Instagram and Facebook this week, we had Lucy, uh, who's just remembering a year since her father passed away and just feeling the pain of that. We're gonna pray for Lucy. For Jody, who had a burst pipe and all kinds of water damage in their home, we're gonna pray for her and her family. For Steph, who is just praying for patience with her children, maybe you can resonate with that. Uh, you need patience as well. We're gonna pray for Steph, for Robin, for emotional peace. And uh, that's something I think probably many of us are looking for. And Tracy, for her son, who's a firefighter, for just protection on his life. And, and then Diana, who's looking for peace of mind around a job. So we're gonna pray together and, and let's, let's take the next few moments and let's allow faith to build in us as we pray. Let's pray. God, we thank you, God, for every single one of these situations. I thank you, God, that your promise is that we can pray and we can, we can look to you and that you do give us peace that surpasses all understanding. And so we start 
our, our time together with just thanksgiving, God, that you are a God who is a provider of every single thing that we need. God, you promised to meet us in our point of need. And so I just pray for anyone who's watching right now or listening. God, I pray that you would meet them exactly right now in this moment, that you would give them the peace that surpasses all understanding that doesn't even make sense, God, in our situation. But I pray that you would give it today and you'd give it richly. God, we also wanna pray for just families all across our church, all across our region. God, we, we pray for families that are creating new normals. God, we pray that you would give wisdom where wisdom is needed. We pray that you give strength even in this moment for tired and weary parents. We pray for spouses. God, maybe even spouses that are watching this together that the honest truth is they need some grace with one another. They've been with each other for a lot of hours and they need your grace today. I pray that you'd give it to them. God, I pray for parents who are worn out and are tired and are weary and have been trying to be uh, working parents and, and uh, homeschool parents and all of those things, all in the middle of all of their time. God, I pray that you would give them an extra dose today of strength. We pray for them. God, we pray for children. God, maybe even children that are in the room or watching this, I pray that you would give them also an ability to experience beauty when so much of it has been removed or taken away or off limits. God, I pray today that they would experience your love, that they would know how much you love them. God, we pray for those that are isolated, that are alone even right now. God, I thank you that your promise is that you're even closer than a brother. So God, I pray for anyone who's alone and feels like they just feel that burden of loneliness. God, I pray that you'd meet them right now. You'd remind them that they're not alone, that you're there, your presence is there. So today we thank you. We thank you, God, that you're here and you're present and you're meeting us all over this region. You're meeting us all over the nation. God, for anyone who's watching, God, I pray that you'd remind us once again that you are the way maker. You're making a way. Even when we don't understand the way, you're making a way. So God, we thank you for that. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Hello and welcome to Central. My name is John Paul and I'm one of the pastors here. And I have the awesome privilege of being your host for today. Hey, if this is your first time online, we wanna say a great big welcome. We would love to get to know you a little better. And one of the ways you can do that is simply by going to centralcc.ca slash new here. And uh, we'll be asking you a few questions just so that we can know who you are and be able to follow up with you to say hello. But maybe you're here watching with your family. Uh, maybe you're by yourself. Maybe you're in isolation. But again, we wanna encourage you to take this time and really connect with one another. We are truly motivated by three things during the season. Number one, we want to encourage you in your faith. We want to do everything we can to just say, hey, God has got this. Uh, don't worry. We, we have this. We are in this together. The second thing is being able to care for you. And there's a number of ways that you can do that. One is texting the word HELP to 905-937-5610 or email care at centralcc.ca. You can do that as well. That last one at care at centralcc.ca, that's even if you are there and you're motivated to maybe help or say, hey, how, what can I do during this time? You can email us at that as well. And the third thing is through connection. It's incredible that we are still able to do this online and connect with different people. Our groups are still running strong. We're trying to do everything we can to still stay in connection. So we are encouraged by that today. So I want to say thank you so much for allowing us to continue to do those three things in your life. And today, if you are able to give, uh, you can do that many different ways, but one of the ways you can online is simply by centralcc.ca slash give. You are able to do that. And because of your generosity, we are still able to communicate and care and connect with different people. It's honestly amazing. I'm able to connect with some of my groups still via online, and that is simply because because of all of your generosity. So thank you, thank you for that. At this time, I wanna let you know of a few things that are upcoming. It is Easter, can you believe it? This week, man, we are so excited about that. We have our Good Friday traditional service at 10.30 on Good Friday morning. You do not wanna miss that. And then on Sunday, we have five experiences happening on all of our platforms at 9, 10.30, 12, five, and seven. Both Good Friday and Easter Sunday are going to be amazing. Again, that'll be on all of our platforms, so you do not wanna miss that. 
Also, I just want to let you in on a little meeting that I had this week. It was just awesome. Uh, I was able to meet with some of my group leaders. It is so encouraging that we are still able to do this. And uh, as I talked to them and heard about some of the stories that are coming out of this, people are still feeling encouraged, still still feeling connected, and still feeling cared for. And that is awesome. So as I go, why don't you check out this video? Hey everyone, it's uh, Pastor John Paul here with some of our young families um, and our young couples uh, groups and their leaders. And so we're so pumped that um, we are still able to connect with so many people uh, during this time. And I just wanted to give them an opportunity to share a little bit of uh, what they're doing and some of the cool stories that are coming out of that. So uh, Lauren, why don't you share a little bit about your group and uh, what's going on with it? Our group has, we've met once um, online last Sunday, and we started doing a devotional together through Version, the app. We'll be doing that the next, um, up until Easter, for the next couple of weeks. And we're also doing a fast together leading up to Easter as well. And we're going to meet every single Sunday night on Zoom and hoping to start studying uh, spiritual gifts. That's our plan. That's so good, Lauren. And we also have Jen Palacero. Uh, your group is a unique group, and I know you, you have a couple of things going on, but why don't you tell us a little bit about what's happening? Yeah, we have two different groups going on. So one's more of a community group based. So we've been able to connect over text and email and all those great forms of technology. And then our other group is more of a life group. And our group has been able to connect on Zoom as well. That's been a really helpful tool for us. And we've been, I've been having one of my teams lead uh, questions for the kids based on the awesome kids programming that our kids pastors have been putting out. And then, um, yeah, <laughs> after uh, that, the adults get together and pray. And hopefully we'll get into a study as well. That's so good. Uh, there are so many groups that are happening right now. Uh, I really encourage you to try and connect with as many as you can. Um, we are just so blessed that we can still connect with you guys during this time. So thanks everyone for joining us. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. I hope you are having an amazing day. Just before I jump in this morning, I do want to make a quick family announcement. We recognize that this is a very difficult time for many of you financially. And so we as leaders at Central felt that we needed to take some fiscal responsibility. So I just wanted you to know that we've worked really hard to cut 40% out of our budget in order to create more space to care for you and make sure that you are cared for. We've done that by taking away expenses and also realigning some of our staff. As well, we're not taking on any new expenses with our building project, and so for the next three months, we are doing everything we can so that we could be most available for the things that matter the most, and that's you. So thank you for your understanding in that. So today, we're continuing in our series called The Gap. And we've been exploring the fascinating things that happened between the death of Jesus on Friday to his resurrection on Easter. And there's a couple of really interesting things that happened that we don't often talk about. And so we thought this would be kind of fun to explore. So last week, we talked about the temple veil. There was this big veil in the temple and it tore in two from top to bottom. And that was a weird, kind of a strange occurrence. We talked about that last week. And so you can catch up by watching last week. But today, we're gonna talk about dead people coming back to life. Okay, so if you have your Bibles, I want you to open your Bible to Matthew chapter 27. So we're going to start in verse 51 or open it up on your version app. But before we jump in, I want to just give you two things to think about. The first thing is that this is a powerful story. And what I mean by that is that the events of the story are less important than the principle that it's trying to teach. I'm not saying it isn't true. I'm just saying if you devoid, if you take away the principle and get distracted by some of the nuances, you'll actually miss the power of it. 
The second thing is it's rich in symbolism. This is something that we're gonna find throughout the Bible, this idea and concept. Okay, so with that idea that this is a story rich in symbolism, let's jump into it. In Matthew 27, verse 51, it says, at the moment that Jesus died, the curtain of the temple was torn from in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and here's where it gets a bit strange, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came up out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. Now, I don't know what you think of at first glance, but I immediately jump to our contemporary zombie movies. I, maybe I shouldn't, but that's where I go. And I see a bunch of half-decomposed people running around causing havoc. Well, that's absolutely not what's happening here. Something completely different, something beautiful and something powerful is happening. And it's rooted in this main theme that we see throughout the Bible called resurrection. Okay, so at the very beginning of the Bible, we read the story of how God speaks into something inanimate, something that is dead, the earth, and breathes into it. And out of that comes life, Adam and Eve. Then we see in the Old Testament, prophets. And there are a couple of stories where prophets would come across someone who had died and they would bring them back to life. We see this also in the life of Jesus. Uh, Jesus raised many people uh, from death to life and he himself was raised from death to life. And then in the early church after Jesus, all the way to Revelation, we see the same theme. In the very beginning of the Bible, death to life, dirt to life, and back to dirt. And in the resurrection and Revelation, dead people coming back to life. So what is this all about and what does it mean for you and I right now? Well, I think there's two really interesting things you need to know about that happens every time someone comes from death to life. Either someone breathes into them, so when God breathed into the dirt, breathed into Adam, he became a living being. When the prophets breathe, there's this weird part where the prophet literally went mouth to mouth with a dead person, um, and that transfer brought them back to life. It's either through breathing or through speaking. So Jesus would say, Lazarus, come out. There was a speaking part. Now, this is going to be really important in just a minute. So when things are dead, there's this hope throughout the Bible that they can come back to life. Here is the hope in times of distress, that even things that look dead, lost, forgotten, over, can come back to life. This is the power of this theme called resurrection. And so, what causes us distress right now? I got thinking about our current situation, and I think for many of us, it's the uncertainty. It's a fear of the unknown. And when we don't know something, we fill our mind with all kinds of terrible scenarios. We're terrified of, of what could happen, what we might think is going to happen. And actually, the greatest fear we have is death. That's the greatest unknown of all. And so into this, we read in the story that there were these people who had died. They had died. They were dead. Now listen, we all know that we're all going to die. As, as, as grim as that is, and as much as we don't want to think about it, that is our reality. Even the strongest of us, like Muhammad Ali, has one mutated cell and it destroys our body. I'm losing my hair. I'm trying to work out right now. And I realize I'm just, I'm, I'm not who I used to be. Death is a reality for all of us. But this isn't just about physical death. It's actually about something deeper. And so if we get stuck on the surface level, we're going to think questions like, well, who are these people? What were their names? Where did they go? Who did they talk to? And we're going to miss the power that actually God brings dead things back to life. And that's the power of the Easter story. So here's the deeper reality. We all actually have experienced death already. You say, what do you mean? Well, the truth is, all of us have had something die in our life something inside of us. There's a deeper meaning to this. Um, I was thinking about the coronavirus, and I was asking my brother-in-law, who's a doctor, how does this work? And he explained it to me, and I hope I translate this well. So here's what happens. The virus is an external situation that finds itself into our body, and it finds itself into our cells, finds its way into our cells, and multiplies rapidly. And in its rapid reproduction, it actually destroys the good cells. It's an external reality that comes inside of us and corrupts us. The other thing that happens is our body tries to fight it. And in fighting it, sometimes in fighting the bad thing, it kills the good cells as well. And I got thinking about the spiritual application of that. Here's what the Bible says sin is. 
Sin is something that has come inside of us and it re reproduces itself rapidly and it destroys the good things that are inside of us. And even our best efforts, no matter how hard we try to fight it, we find ourselves constantly in this state. Um, so whether it's greed or lust or pride or fear, we find these things inside of us. They've infected us. They are consuming us. They are destroying us. And the consequence is that death comes. Death comes to us emotionally. It comes to us relationally. It sometimes comes to us financially. And it comes to us spiritually. And so I got interested in the word pandemic. The word pandemic is from two Latin words, pan and demos, which is pan, all, demos, humanity. A pandemic is something that actually impacts all of humanity. That's why the coronavirus is a pandemic. But the Bible says that there's a deeper condition. Sin is also a pandemic. Here's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. It says, for all have sinned. It's a pandemic. All of us has, have this virus inside of us that's working against us, working against who we were created to be, who we could be or should be. Now, when I was a kid growing up and I had that passage read to me, I thought that was a judgment statement. You're a sinner, you're bad. And I actually don't think that anymore. I actually think it's simply a diagnosis. Think about it this way. When you go to the doctor and you do tests and there's something wrong with you, and the doctor has the grace and the wisdom and the compassion to tell you what's wrong with you, he's not judging you. He's not judging you for how you got it or why you got it, whether it was something you did to bring it upon yourself or not. He is simply giving you a diagnosis. And I think the Bible is doing the same thing. Maybe you're here and you're wondering, you know, why is the world the way it is? Why do people do what they do? I've seen in this crisis, yes, there's some beautiful things that are happening, but there's also some not so good things happening. The worst in people is being revealed, like people who steal toilet paper. God, what's wrong with you, right? Or even maybe you're penned in your house and you find yourself saying things that you wish you hadn't said or thinking about things you wish you weren't thinking about or doing things you wish you didn't do. It's in this crisis that our true nature is actually elevated and revealed. And if you're like me, there's parts of me that I know are infected. There's parts of me that I know are not the way that they should be. The Bible just says, that's sin. That's what that is. That's the diagnosis. For all have sinned, and they fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of the sin is death. The result is that the air is taken literally out of us. So the coronavirus gets in, especially through our airways, into our lungs. And it inflames our lungs. And our lungs lose their capacity not only to receive oxygen, but also to expel carbon dioxide. And so in that process, we literally get inflamed to the point where we are choked out. The virus becomes so great inside of us that we can no longer fight it, and we die. I got thinking about the idea of zombies. We, there are times when we are living, but we're not really alive. And that's what the Bible says sin is. Sin brings us to that point where we're existing, but we're not really living. And so what is the solution? Well, the Bible goes on to say in this story that, yeah, they were dead. And if we're honest, in some way, most of us, would, if we're honest, would acknowledge there's something that has died inside of me. Maybe there's something I should be that I'm not, or maybe something has happened to me that has impacted me. I am infected with this virus. And so they were dead. But there's something really fascinating, and it goes back to what I said earlier, what Jesus does. Jesus does two things before he dies. The first thing is he speaks. Remember I told you that's a theme in resurrection? He says, Father, speaking to you and I and all those who exist, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And then it says he breathed his last. In his final breath, he was giving us a transfer of his life. He was willing to exchange his life, his breath, his truth for our lies, our death. And so I think it also about the coronavirus and why a ventilator works. So when we are infected with the virus, a ventilator is inserted. And that ventilator pumps oxygen into our body when our body is unable to produce or take in enough. And it helps expel the carbon dioxide. Just like the virus is an in external infection, so the ventilator is an outside intervention. And in the same way, what happened on the cross was Jesus was making an outside intervention for us. And so these people who were dead actually came back to life. And so this is the power of this story. And I cannot miss the incredible metaphor and the symbolism that we're actually all walking through right now. That when we are dead in our sin, Christ came into our life so that we could live. And you say, well, how does he do that? Well, let me explain it to you this way. Jesus actually himself said it this way in John 14, 6. 
He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Listen, I know there's gonna be times when you, you, you don't know where you're going. You don't know what's happening. You're confused. You've lost your way. I get that. I feel that way actually quite often right now. Jesus says, when you feel like you are dying in confusion and frustration, I will show you the way out. He also said, I am the truth. When you're dying to the lies, maybe the lies that you believe because someone has spoken them to you or you just believe them about yourself. The truth is, most of our fear is rooted in a lie. You're believing something could happen that may never happen. But that's, Jesus says, in your lies, I am the truth. And then I am the life. In the parts of your life that have died, Maybe you feel like you've died in a relationship. Maybe you feel like you've died emotionally in some way. Maybe you're carrying something you shouldn't carry. Maybe you feel infected. The truth is Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And in our uncertainty, Jesus offers certainty. And this is what the Bible goes on to say in Romans 6, 23. It says, yes, it's true. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So maybe you're here and you're like, you know what? That's what I need. If I'm honest with myself, I knew something was wrong. I just didn't know why. I thought maybe it was me. Maybe I was wrong. No, the truth is you've been infected with something. And the truth is that there is a diagnosis. There is a cure. And his name is Jesus. He promises to exchange his life, to breathe life into you, and to exchange his life for your life so you can live if you follow in his way. There's another really cool story in the Old Testament uh, from a prophet Ezekiel. And and he's walking across a valley and he comes across a scene where there's been a great battle. And all across the field are dead bodies and they've been decomposed to where most of them are just skeletons. And then he has this vision and it's a vision for your life. Maybe you're here and as you look at your life, as you look at the panorama, maybe it's your past, maybe it's your present, maybe it's your perceived future and all you see is death, all you see is hopelessness, all you see is despair, all you see is fear, you just see bones. Here is the promise for you today. Here is the hope that you can anchor your life on. The prophet hears God say to him, tell these bones, dry bones, hear the word of God. This is what God says to you. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. May that be true of the dead parts of your life. May you accept God's words of truth and have those things come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am God. And so I want to encourage you with this reality today that no matter what part of your life has died, maybe you feel like you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death right now, Maybe when you think all you can think of is despair and death, I want to remind you that there's a God who brings dead things back to life. I want to proclaim life into you, into your home, into your situation, for this is our God of hope, that even in our death, there is still a promise that life can come if we trust him, if we trust him. And that is what I want for you today. And so at the end of this experience today, we're going to put up on the screen three questions that you can reflect on, hopefully questions that will guide you through the experience that you're in right now. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you're at, but I do know that if you feel like death is all around you, whatever that looks like, if you feel like you've been infected by something and, and it's corrupting you to the point where you're thinking thoughts you shouldn't think, saying things you shouldn't say, doing things you shouldn't do, there is a cure, there is hope, and his name is Jesus. And so in these three questions, I want you just to discuss them with maybe those who are, you're watching with today. Or if you don't have anyone to talk with right now, maybe engage with our online pastor. Or maybe call up a friend and just talk about these things because this really matters. Listen, there is hope today in the truth of who Jesus is. And so, finally, what does this mean for me right now? Well, here's what I'd like to encourage you with. Maybe this is kind of a new idea to you. And maybe you never knew why you felt the way you felt and you knew something was wrong inside of you. You knew something wasn't right. You were dying inside. Maybe you're dying of loneliness. Maybe you're dying of fear. Maybe you're dying of anxiety. Maybe you're dying of, of things that you've done in your past or things that have happened to you. Maybe you're dying because of your fear of the future. I don't know what it is. And maybe this is all new to you, but here's what you can do. In a moment, I'm gonna close in prayer. And in that moment, you can ask God to give his life for you. 
Just receive what God wants to do. Just like, just like a, a patient with coronavirus receives the ventilator, receive God's life. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And that is for you today. And if you'd like, you can interact with one of our online pastors and they'll explain to you what it means to accept this amazing offer of God's life. But maybe you're here today and finally you're, you're uncertain. You're not sure of which way to go or what's happening and you're confused and you're frustrated and you feel limited. Could you just believe today that Jesus is the way? Or maybe you're here today and there's lies that are killing you. You're, you there's lies surrounding your head and it's literally killing you. Could I just encourage you just to take a moment to sit in God's truth? Maybe take a moment to read the promises of God again and be reminded of who God is and who God is for you right now. And finally, maybe you feel like something has died inside of you. It doesn't matter whether you go to church or not or whether you believe uh, all these things or not. The truth is you know something isn't right. Could I just encourage you to receive God's life today? So in closing, I want you just to take a moment to stop all the noise, all the distractions. Understand, yes, the diagnosis is dire. There is something inside of us that's broken. It's called sin, but there is a cure. And the greatest part of the Easter story is that even in death, there can be life. God brings dead things back to life. It's the power of resurrection, and it's for you today. So would you join me as we pray? And maybe this is the first time you've ever prayed this, or maybe you need to pray it again as a reminder. I'm praying hope for you today in this prayer. And so God, I simply ask that in this moment, you would quiet us to the place where we can hear your voice. That maybe in the areas that we have allowed death to come in, that God, you would breathe your life I pray that in this moment, if we've allowed things into our mind, into our heart, into our home, into our life that we know should not be there, that in your name and in your power, you would set us free. When we are unable to do it on our own, you promised you would step in. And just as sin has infected us, so you are willing to come in and remove that in order for us to experience your life. Remind us in this moment that you are the way. You're the way out. I know the world seems crazy, but you're the way out. Remind us that you are the truth. When we're bombarded with lies and we don't know what to believe, you are the truth and you are the life. In everything that has died in us, you can bring it back to something better, something greater. This is our hope. And so we trust in you, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And so today, may God bless you with this truth and this power that no matter what has died in your life, there can be life. And may you be an agent of this life everywhere you go in a world that is desperate for hope. May you be his voice speaking his words, not only over yourself and your family, but around those around you. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.